Welcome back to my channel, everyone. My name's Brian Kapicki, and I'm the Data and AI Enabler. I'm very excited about the series we're going to be starting off on. This is what I call Lesson Zero, because it's not an actual lesson, but I want to give you a sense of what I'm planning, and I'm really excited about a whole set of videos I'm going to be doing. So let's jump into what I want to talk about today. If you've watched my videos and you see my series, you'll notice that there's a general theme. There are three technologies that I see as converging and critical in the future ahead. In fact, so critical, I would say this is the single most important development in technology since the Internet. So what am I talking about? I call it the big three because it's really the convergence of three different technologies that combine to provide a very powerful platform that's transforming the way we do everything on the planet. And the big three consists of one circle is big data, the other circle is AI, and there's this sort of overlapping point where they work together. The problem is big data means massive, massive amounts of data, or really large volumes combined with difficult to use formats like video streams and audio and on and on. Now, when you talk about big data, what's important to realize is that in the last decade or so, the level of information, the amount and types has just expanded exponentially. You can see it all around you, drive around your town. I can see in mine, we have video cameras that are monitoring traffic stops. There's cameras all around and more and more even on TV when they catch people doing things, it's usually because there's all kinds of monitoring devices which feed into AI systems and can do things like facial recognition and things. So this is really transforming things in ways that probably were barely imagined 10 years ago. The problem is to process this volume and this various types of information efficiently it really can't be done well generally on premise. What do I mean by that? Well, you've got to scale up. In other words, you have to be able to leverage potentially thousands of computers at once. And you have to be able to do this quickly. The volume and scale of what you're trying to do can change dramatically from day to day, week to week. So you need a lot of flexibility in this. And you don't want to have to take three months just to configure and set up a series of computers that can do the work. Now, what solved this problem is the cloud. And I don't think it's any accident that you see this three-piece set come together now that we have cloud. I don't think it would be very feasible. So there's sort of a, a backfeeding on this. The reason there's so much data available is partly and large extent due to the cloud. And also, cloud provides the answer to being able to support these massive data loads. No doubt about it, this big three I'm showing you here are playing a huge role in moving things along finding cures, medications, tracing the spreading of disease, etc. If you want to jumpstart your career, if you want to be at the forefront of where this is going and have great job security because you're in high need, you want to focus here. And I mean that even for people who do web app and mobile app development. I think sometimes they feel a little too comfortable that they're always going to be in need. But I'm going to tell you this integration of data and AI with their apps is paramount. And it's going to overshadow the mere creation of a web app. And, and I'm going to be borrowing heavily from my book, Master Azure Databricks, but I want to point out a few differences as well. And most importantly, I'm going to be doing a sort of parallel training here in which I cover Apache Spark, which is open source. You can download it, install it wherever you want, as well as Databricks. So Databricks is a cloud-only platform, and we'll see how we can get in there. And fortunately, there's a free tier you can get in and do almost everything in here with that. So I'll talk about that as part of the series. So I'm calling this the Fellowship of the Cluster because I really want to say Fellowship of the Ring, that's not really accurate. <laughs> so fellowship of the cluster, because when you use Spark or Databricks, you use these things called clusters. We'll talk about that too. It means we're on this journey together. I'm pulling for you. I will be giving you documentation along the way. That'll all be on GitHub when it makes sense. I mean, this for instance only has two slides, not a lot to share. Uh, also the code. So I'll put a zip file out in GitHub. that will have slides related to what I'm doing. It'll have the code examples, whatever data you might need to upload. So everything's there and you can just step through it. So I want to thank you for joining me in this. I hope you watch the series. Subscribe, because then if you do subscribe and set notifications on, you'll be notified for every video that I put out. So thanks. Take care and share this with your friends, if you will. Really like to help as many people as possible.